Hey folks, welcome back to Learn From Dad. I'm James, I'm back out in the garage again today. Absolutely beautiful fall day in Iowa. A couple days ago, we did a video on fuel filters and changing them in my Ram 2500 with the 6.7 liter Cummins engine in it. And I promised a follow-up video that was a little less about how to and more just in general about fuel filters. So here we are, let's jump right in. So if you're a mechanic or a person like me who's worked on equipment for a long time, this video is probably gonna be a lot of repeat for you, but welcome to follow along. This is really for somebody who's new to help them better understand a few things about fuel filters, specifically things like what are the purpose? What's the different styles? Where would I find them located? When should I change them? And which filters should I use? So let's explore each of those and add some detail to help you better understand fuel filters you'll come across on various pieces of equipment. First, let's talk about purpose of fuel filters. So we're next to my mower, which is a Kubota F3060. You can see here in the engine bay is the fuel filter. And the main reason for that fuel filter is to protect the fuel injection or fuel delivery system that's mounted to the engine that feeds fuel into the engine to mix with air and combust and make you go forward. So as that fuel exits and comes over into the injection pump, that's what we're trying to protect, number one, at least on this is a diesel engine, and that injection pump or fuel injection pump that might be on your gasoline car is a high precision part with high precision components, and we need to minimize the amount of contaminants that are going through that and causing damage. Furthermore, outbound from the injection pump itself is going to be on fuel injected vehicles or diesel as injectors. So we need to make sure we protect those injectors so that they don't get material in them, get clogged and cause damage. So yes, just like what's in your air filter in your house or your vehicle, the fuel filter is filtering out debris and particulates primarily. Now, on a diesel vehicle, you may also get filters that help to separate the water and actually be able to drain it out, or there's some that actually will absorb the water as well to try to get water and moisture out of diesel fuel. Now, when it comes to styles of filter, your vehicle or piece of equipment is going to have probably one of three styles of filters. Number one is what we call an inline filter. Number two is what we call a canister filter. Or number three is what we call a cartridge filter. Let's take a look at some examples of those on some of my different equipment that we have. So the first filter style we'll talk about is inline. And yes, all filters are somewhere in line between the tank and the fuel usage on the engine, such as the injection pump or a gas carburetor but inline is specifically inline. So in this case, rubber lines are cut, spliced in, got some clamps holding it in, or there might be some threaded fittings on either side, such as on an automotive piece of equipment. Or here's another example on my classic old Honda V65 motorcycle. Underneath the seat is an inline fuel filter. Now, before we step away from inline fuel filters, one really important piece of information, they are always directional. I drew an arrow on this to make it easy. There is a teeny tiny little arrow here that indicates the direction that I can barely feel or see. It took me about a minute to rotate this one around and find. That is very important anytime you install one of these inline filters, but it is pointed in the right direction or it may not flow the right amount of fuel. So next is a canister style filter. This example is on my skid loader. So. It in itself is a contained filter element, and in this particular case, a water fuel separator, which is what's on the bottom there. This would spin on and spin off of an appropriate size to fit this particular filter head. This one also, just for reference, has a bleed screw on the top because anytime you're changing a fuel filter, you need to fill it, and you wanna make sure, if at all possible, you're filling it with fuel through the filter. So in my case on this one, I would crack the bleed screw if I was to change that. I would pump the primer bulb, which would shove, excuse me, fluid, fuel, up and out the bleed screw. So let's take a look at another example. Over here on my wood chipper I use for my tree business. So again, this is a diesel engine, so another water fuel separator. And there you can see the filter head. This one has a little different primer style if I was to change it, which I just recently did. This is a push style primer, whereas the other one had a bulb style primer. Hey, buddy. 
And finally, we have a cartridge style like what's on my engine I did the video on the other day. So there's the filter housing, the cap screws off, take the cap off, pull the filter out and replace the filter, put the cap back on. So now that you know what kind of styles there are and what they look like, where are they gonna be located? It really depends upon the piece of equipment or the vehicle that you're working with. So as you saw on, for example, my lawnmower, it's right near the engine. My skid loader, you open the back door up, it's right near the engine. My motorcycle, it was under the seat, so something a little less convenient probably changed last on a gasoline engine. On my truck, one's in the engine bay, the other one's back underneath of the truck by the fuel tank. Many times gas vehicles are gonna have the filter on one of the frame rails in line with one of the fuel lines coming up. It really varies significantly. Now one last place that you'll often find them, and this is important because many of you probably have a, a string trimmer, for example, or a lawn mower, or maybe even a leaf blower or chainsaw. So let's take a quick look at where those are commonly located. Small engines like blowers, chainsaws, etc will actually have a filter down in the tank. So there you can just barely kind of see that black and white screen. That's on the fuel line that then runs to the carburetor. So next, how many filters am I going to have? Well, in most cases on gasoline powered equipment, car, you know, truck, small engine like a chainsaw or blower, you're typically gonna have one filter. Now on a diesel engine, particularly as the larger the engine, the larger the piece of equipment, you're typically going to have multiple. And there's a couple reasons that you're going to have multiple. Uh, number one, different levels of filtration. So on my truck, the rear filter, the stock filter is a, a five micron rated filter. And the filter that's up in the engine bay is a three micron. So it's kind of a stair-stepped approach where you catch the biggest stuff in the back, you catch the next level of stuff up in the front. Another reason you might have multiple, say on a tractor or a combine or a semi, for example, a tractor trailer that has a very, very large engine, you might need multiple filters for the flow volume to get enough fuel through them to support that large engine. So the next million dollar question, when should I change my fuel filter? That's a very large question with a lot of different answers and a lot of different it depends. First off, whatever it is you have, whether it's a vehicle or a piece of equipment like a lawnmower, check your operator's manual. They always give minimum guidance on when to change it and why. You may find some cars that say 70,000, 100,000 miles or you never have to change it unless there's a problem. Whereas you look at something like my truck and it recommends five to 10,000, with 15 suggested max miles before it's changed. If your vehicle is running right, if your chainsaw is running right, your lawnmower, it's probably fine. Um, I cut trees on the side for a business and I don't remember the last time I've changed one of the filters in my saws. That's okay. Now, if I'm going to have my truck, that's my daily driver that I use for shuttling my kids around, pulling trailers, doing work, I rely on this vehicle. So I do have a tendency to make sure that it is maintained so that I don't get stranded somewhere I don't wanna be. As speaking of stranded, I was watching one of the episodes of Junkyard Digs the other day, which was hilarious. I enjoy his content. And he was driving one of his vehicles that had been rehabbed from the middle of nowhere. And the fuel filter clogged up on him while he was driving down the highway and ended up changing it on the side of the road. So normal daily driver, you wanna prevent that. It was very funny watching him do that. And that's what you wanna be able to avoid with one of your normal vehicles. So the last question should be, which filter should I use? And that's a pretty broad question as well. Now, the first thing you should understand is filters, just like an air filter, there are ratings for them. Filters are rated in microns. That's what you're going to see. It has to do with the size of particles that can or cannot pass through. I mentioned earlier when we were talking about my truck and the filters that came on it from the manufacturer, there was a five micron filter in the rear and a three micron filter in the front. So when you're making a choice, the last thing I want you to do is to say, well, I put it in there because the parts guy said this was the best one. That's fine if the parts guy says that at the parts store or the parts counter, ask him why. You wanna make sure you understand what you're buying relative to the level of filtration when it comes to fuel filters. The last thing you wanna do 
is have a injection pump that the manufacturer wanted you to have a three micron filtration rating. You put a 10 micron filtration rating filter on there and you trash your injection pump because you're sending too much and too large of particles through there. So another question would be then, can I put on a better filter than what the manufacturer suggests? If they say a five micron filter, can I put on a three micron filter? Sure, of course you can do that. Just know that that added restriction is one going to fill up the filter faster because of catching more particulates. And also if it's not large enough and if the filtration is, is so small compared to what the manufacturer wanted, you may not get enough filter flow through there to suffice and support that injection pump. Okay, my final point. If you're still really unsure, go find a good mechanic and ask them. I've trained thousands of mechanics over the years. A good one is worth its weight in gold. They are the unsung heroes of every industry. Number one, you need to thank them. But number two, go find a good one, ask them what they would use, where is it located, and they'll get you guided straight. So hopefully this has been educational for you and it gives you a broader perspective of how to think about fuel filters on all kinds of different applications to guide you as you go on to whatever the next thing is that you'll buy. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you found this content helpful, please hit that like button. It does help promote this video and support me. And if you like the content I'm making, go ahead and subscribe and I'll hope to see you back on the next video. Thanks and stay curious.